So I'm going to do a Bible study um, about Christ being formed in you. Um, I felt like this was important a couple weeks ago, and I started putting together some notes on it. Um, um, but the other day, I was thinking about um, just the concept of someone feeling like they're missing out on something. Like, you have a lot of decisions to make in life. You want to make sure you're making the right one, that Christ in you is solidifying things in your heart, and you're making those decisions. And so, I know when I was younger, like in my 20s, um, in my later 30s, um, I used to feel like I was missing out on something. Like, I remember when I was in Berkeley, I would sacrifice friendships, and I felt like I had to just kind of cut people off in order to do well and I was very mistaken one of the things that I pray for the most for people that I really love is that they're well balanced that they understand that it's important to stay connected with everyone and also do well in their craft and their art and whatever but um just staying connected and feeling connected is really important so um realize also that you know, God isn't going to lead you to be scatterbrained and bonkers. So it's not like people like the concept of free will, but it's not like God's going to be like, here's a menu, study it, and you can freely choose and be crazy. And it's like, well, what is what do you want in your heart? Like, God will kind of tell you, like, what your preferences are. Like, you, you have certain preferences that God gifted you with, like... So, you know, if that day you feel more like eating a hamburger than a sandwich, pick the hamburger, right? Like, don't be like, I don't know, I could pick this or that or this or that. When you walk in the Spirit, you're going to pick one thing. The Spirit will lead you one way to do one thing. It's not like um, you're missing out on something because you picked one thing. No, you are led to do that one thing. So be confident in the choices that you make. Um, and walking in the spirit and realize when you are walking in the spirit um, and try to pick up confidence that God leads you the right way because um, if you ate a hamburger and a sandwich you're just going to get fat right so just make one solid decision and realize you're not missing out um, uh, very well balanced I already did that Okay, so I'm going to read this, Galatians 4.19. It's, um, I love the book of Galatians. My favorite book is Romans. Um, I read that mostly. God leads me to read that, like, over and over again a lot. But, um, I love Galatians, too. I love what, whatever Paul wrote, Romans to Philemon. So this is Galatians 4.19, and this is what my Bible study is about, um, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand out of you. Okay, I won't get into 20. But the concept is I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The Galatians had fallen under bad doctrine. And paul was like i really want to see christ being formed in you these people had christ in them they believed on the gospel but then they got misled into believing another doctrine for salvation which was really wicked and paul said they were beguiled and bewitched and stuff um but you don't want to be a baby christian all the time you want christ who's in you when you believed on the cross alone for salvation he's inside of you you want him to be formed in you. You want to learn patience. Um, the other day I was like having car bad car problem. And I'm like, tribulation works patience. It does. You want to learn how to have that patience and experience. And what, the end result is hope. You want, to, you want to have the doctrine. And the doctrines in the Bible, what Paul teaches, to just be constantly building up in you and growing strong. And you don't want to stay... Um, a baby in Christ and worry and this and that. So, um, so that's, what, that's what this is about. Um, Christ being formed in you. Um, there's also a difference between being a child in Christ and just, um, and, and not being wise yet. 
and walking in your flesh. Like, you can be saved and just walk in your flesh, which is dead. And I'll talk about that in another study, the fact that you're spiritually circumcised from your flesh. Like, it's so easy not to walk in your flesh now. Why would you want to pick it up? It's dead. You're dead to sin, the Bible says. Um, and that's another verse I'll go over in another Bible study, but there's a verse that says you're dead to sin and alive unto God. So, um, yeah, the body of sin was destroyed, so you can pick it up, but it's just, it's, it's gross and wicked. Why would you want to? Um, and then, um... So yeah, you want to, you want to not walk in your flesh and you want to grow from being a child to a mature saint and you want to put on the armor of God. And when you become more mature, your armor is going to be very formed. You're going to be very strong in the Lord. And that comes with reading the King James Bible and really understanding that that's the word of God and understanding Pauline doctrine and that God is for you and not against you, um, and all kinds of things. Um, um, getting salvation down is number one. If you don't have salvation down, you're going to become like a Galatian and be tricked and thinking, oh, well, maybe there's another way of salvation and you just got saved. You just believed on the cross. Why would you want to take what God did, which was a miracle, like, believe on the, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and change it to something else when you already have Christ in you. He's just like, why are you putting, Christ in you is like, why are you putting me through hell? Like, you're, you're not appreciating the cross now. <laughs> that wasn't good enough. It's the blood of Christ plus something else. Like, it's, it's, it hurts him and it makes you a dodo. The Galatians were quite stupid. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to read Colossians 2.13. Galatians. Um, I think it's right after Philippians, Colossians. Yeah, Colossians 2, uh, 13. And you being dead in your sins... Again, you're dead to sin. And the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him. Quickened means he made you alive. So you're made alive once you got saved. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So again, this is... Colossians 2, uh, I just read 13 and 14. So, having salvation down, that all your sins are nailed to the cross. You don't bear them anymore. It's completely free. You have to have that down to even start becoming mature. You have to have it down. And that will come with understanding Paul, our apostle, and what he wrote. Um, what he wrote about the cross and how you're sealed and saved until and unto the day of redemption. I'm going to read Ephesians 6, 17. Ephesians, <sighs> 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 Ephesians, here we go. Ephesians 6. And I only read a King James Bible because I'll get into that another Bible study. Don't read another Bible. They're bad. Read just the King James only. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation. That's an important armament to keep on at all times. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So having that helmet on, knowing you're saved at all times, will keep your mind intact. Um, you don't want to carry around baggage. You want to let it all go. A good chapter to read. And this is one reason why I became highly uh, fond of one of my friends. It was like, I got saved off of Romans 7. 
is what he said. And I'm like, wow, that's, I didn't get saved off of Romans 7, but he understood the concept of salvation when a pastor was reading Romans 7. And I was like, oh, I have to be friends with this person because I love Romans 7. What Romans 7 did to me was it got rid of any shame or guilt of my past. I read it over and over again. And I understand, I understood the separation of your new man, which is created in Christ and the flesh, which is dead and how God sees, sees us. Um, if you have any problems with baggage and regret and things like that, I would read Romans seven and pray a lot because Romans seven really helps. But a lot of people get attacked by the enemy without having their armor really strong on them. And one of them is people will be told by the enemy, you're a sinner still. Okay. Well, some people say I'm a sinner saved by grace and I'm a dirty, rotten sinner saved by grace. Is that really what Paul says? No, we don't go around saying we're dirty, rotten. The new man isn't dirty, rotten. What's dirty, rotten is the flesh and Christ paid for all your sins. And now you can walk in newness of life. If you turn and say, well, that newness of life is dirty, rotten, uh, -uh that's an error. You don't want to call what Paul says is walking in Christ in the new man dirty. So you have to realize there's this, you know, trichotomy of your soul, the new man and the flesh, which is dead now. So <clears throat> people get mixed up in doctrine and they get attacked by the enemy. And one thing a serpent will say is, you're a sinner. You should feel bad about yourself. I mean, carry baggage around, basically. My glasses are making my hair fuzzy. I hope my hair is just fuzzy. Anyway, um, don't, don't carry around baggage. And don't pay attention to my fuzzy hair. And don't believe that you're, you should be afraid or ashamed. Read Romans 7, get out of that, and realize that people with a bad spirit calling you a sinner, there's something wrong with them. They probably didn't want to accept the cross. There's a lot of people out there that hate the cross because they've trained themselves to become bitter. And be aware of that and just say, mm, I know who, who I am in Christ. I'm a new creation. And I'm created unto good works. Because Christ being in you will just do good things. Um, sorry, I just covered that up. Uh, and then another thing the enemy will say is that salvation is not free. And then that goes back around to, you're a sinner, you need to worry and just focus on your works and being good to go to heaven. And you're like, that never saved me to begin with. Because if righteousness could come by the law, then it would. But the law concluded all under sin. And so we're all justified freely by his grace. And that's how we get saved and we become a new creation that does good works, but we don't do good works for salvation. We just do it because that's who God is. So anyway, um, uh, not to sound that weak girlish anyway, whatever, I'll just stop. Um, your, your identity of, oh, they'll say like your identity of a saint, of, of you being a saint is invalid. So... Yeah, your identity of being a saint is valid. You need to read Romans to realize that it's valid. Anybody is saying otherwise, bad doctrine. Maybe they're intentionally believing bad doctrine. You don't know. Find, find better friends than people that call you a sinner and try to shame you and get you to follow some religious system that's just based on wanting your money anyway. Walk freely, find good friends, um, have a life based on God freely walking in you, stand fast in liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Helps to have scripture memorized. Um, okay, Galatians 2.20, I'm almost done. Galatians 2, chapter 20. I mean, chapter 20, verse 20. I am tired. Galatians 2, 20. Uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. 
but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, again, that goes back to Christ being formed in you. Christ was so formed in Paul that he's like, it's not even me anymore. It's just Jesus. And I told a friend the other day, I was like, sometimes I just see how much God's in control. I feel like all I am is my awareness because it's just Christ. It's just Christ in me. I have a lot of plans to do this and that. And that's because of Christ in me, what Christ put in my heart to do. And he only puts good things there. And oh, this verse right after used to be my, one of my very favorites. Um, my very favorite is Romans 3, 24. Um, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. But um, I really like this one too. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Those people that want to say you're a sinner, obey the law, whatever. You're no good because you're not doing the law. You're like, but righteousness doesn't come by the law. Have a nice day. I'm saved for free by the blood of Christ. And I'm a good new creation. And I'm not under the law. And guess what? The Bible also says the strength of sin is the law. So any, my cats are trying to get out. Anyone that's trying to put you in a law is actually trying to get you to sin. And that's another Bible study I'll do. Look it up. The words, the strength of sin is the law. It's the truth. That's a Bible verse from Paul too. And 2 Timothy 2, 3 will be the last one. Um, endure hardness. 2 Timothy 2, 3. Oh, too far. I went to Titus. Second Timothy 2, 3. Got a headache. Um, Thou therefore endure hardness is a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Put on all your armor. Get Christ built up in you. Grow in wisdom. Read the Bible where God tells you to read the Bible in your heart. You won't go wrong. Don't read it out of doubt and fear. Make sure you got the right spirit about doing everything you do. And you won't go wrong. And endure hardness because we live in a present evil world. And the Bible says Satan is the god of this world. Not like capital G, but the little g. Um, and so he still has power in this world. And you've got to be stronger than him. And Christ in you is always stronger than him. So you put on the armor and then you're like, I can battle Satan. He's just a ninny. He is. <laughs> he is a ninny. And I'm sure he gets this Bible study. That's why I'm doing it. Anyway, that's about it. Have a good night. Don't look at my fluffy hair.